Hi guys, I'm here and welcome back to another episode of FRC's Robotics 101. So the last episode, we have gone to the very first basics of CATS. And as you guys all know, it's just drawing models for manufactured parts. So our topic today is to actualize those ideas by prototyping and making the game feel. First, why do you need to make prototype? Making prototype can help us to make sure our mechanism is feasible. The thing is, the first approach of the robot, it will not work properly. So you guys need prototypes for testing and improving efficiency when going to the off official version. So the, the first thing about prototyping is to make it simple. Because it's just the prototype, so it just need to be suitable for the, the mechanism that you guys uh, choose. Next up, using materials like wood because they are flexible for applying changes, uh, fixes, and having various statistics, strong for constructions, and building the base for the prototype. And they are, pre they are pretty cheap. I believe you guys can find those materials around your area or places like uh, factories or in institutes. Because they are just prototype, so they don't need to be perfect, but their job must be accomplished. For example, when talking about the shooting mechanism, we have, cho we have chose the two-wheel shooter, as you can see here. And we have made the prototype for this mechanism. And this mechanism also be found in many um, machines like the tennis lobber or the baseball launcher. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is the making process of the prototype. To begin with, I'm gonna talk about the making process of the prototype. First, um, the materials required are wood for a, for a simple frame, metals for supporting parts, uh, PVC pipe if needed for the gun barrel. Most important materials are the wheels and motors, which you guys can get them from around your area or get those from shops that are that's dedicated to your competitions. An example of this is the Animark shop of the ever competitions. Uh, for our, our prototype, we use metal both for the, for the frame and for the supporting of the shooter. The first thing you guys should do is to attach the wheels into the motors and let them ro rotate to and uh, counter to each other. Then, before operating the prototype, you guys should notice some input numbers, such as the distance between the wheels by twisting from 3 4 uh, the diameter of the ball, the angle shot, the angle shot and the height of the collector. Calculate the strength and the speed of the motors by using uh, them the manual. After operating, you, you guys can check out the accuracy and the stability of your prototype. Next up, constantly ch changing the settings of the prototype by varying the distance between the wheels, changing the wheels to change different types of wheels to get the most suitable uh, stiffness and by doing by doing this you guys can calculate the force act on the ball and the distance that the ball can go lastly if you guys want to redirect the ball path then change the change the width of the axles by adding or removing supporting materials or even the wheels too finally you guys should have various setting environment as this should help you to ensure the possibility of the prototype and in, in addition including flexible models will help you guys to get uh, flexible uh, statistics write them down on a spreadsheet and work, and work from them I believe after the making process you guys may encounter some problems 
such as the inefficiency of the collector or the instability of the prototype. So, by detecting these problems, you guys can test out uh, various options after getting fixes and for the long-term benefit this should help improving the every mechanism of your robots and if those things are too problem problematic I suggest you guys have a backup plan that we have mentioned in episode 4 so moving on to the next part so the next part of this episode is about the game feel so as you guys can see I am standing in the middle of the prototype of the game feel. You guys all know its purpose is to test out your mechanisms and your robots. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about the game feel is about its constructions. There are three tips that you guys should notice. The first tip is to construct the game feel as soon as possible for applying immediately changes and to avoid time consuming. I guess you guys didn't want to waste your time, right? The second tip is about the materials. Using wood for building the fence around the game field. Building parts, especially the gold, uh, the gold tower. Next up, uh, using metals for supporting, such as uh, the brackets down here for enhancing the fence. Some of the constructions or the supporting, you guys can say the base for the extra parts. Or you guys can use metal frames for the gold tower. Or even build the whole entire game component. As you can see, this is the simple version of the FRC 2020 game fill. So what does a FRC game fill usually contain? There are five most common components. The first one is the gold tower. The second one is the supply stations. Unfortunately, we didn't have one here as it is the testing environment. The third one is those obstacles. The fourth one are the extra tasks. And the, la the last one is the end game task. So, the first component I'm going to talk about is the gold tower. So, as you guys can see, this is our prototype of the gold tower. Usually, a gold tower contains two sets of scoring methods. One is through the higher hole, and the second one is through the lower hole. So, the holes can be in different shapes. For example, the FRC 2020 game, as I can see, the higher hole is in a hexagonal shape and the lower hole is a split. Or the FRC 2090 game, the gold towers have two circular holes with the exact same size. I, I believe people usually chose the higher hole as is the most common method so if you guys decide to choose this way then keep in mind that the bike plate is really important why is this component important since when going to the real game you guys can only see the game feel through the camera that attach on the robots. So why is this component important? Firstly, uh, imagine when, you got, when the goal tower is completed, you shot the ball into the goal and unexpectedly some of the balls uh, bounce out and those balls will not be counted for points. So not only the backplate affects the bouncing of the ball, but also affects your ranking score. So, my suggestions is to build this component as the first part of the gold tower. And in addition, you guys can see I have put some reflective tape on the high hole. So by doing this, 
when going to the real game, we can only see the uh, fill through the cameras that attach on, on the robots. So this should help us to distinguish the gold tower from the other parts. So you wonder, how can we test this mechanism? And the gold tower hasn't done yet. You guys can draw or using tape to create the shape of the holes on the wall and then shoot it to test out your mechanism. So moving on to the next part is the supply station. I have mentioned earlier, we didn't have one here, so I just described it to you and you can follow those by the picture uh, right here. So the supply station is usually next to the survival station and it is the main method for providing game components. For example, the MRC to the Antenna game, we have the yellow ball like this, or the MRC to the N29, we have uh, this kind of ball, as you can see here. Since uh, some tasks, they require robots to interact with the supply station to get the game component. So this part is indispensable for every single FRC game field. For example, the FRC 2019 game, we have the rings, or you guys can call it, the hatch panels. We need to get them directly from the station and uh, put them into the cargo ship to gain points. So we need to research for a mechanism that will let the robot automatically get the rings from the supply stations. So moving on to our next part is the obstacles. As you guys can see down here or uh, that one. Usually obstacles are high platform which made from thick wood supporting materials like metals or aluminum. But metal is preferable as it is the strongest and the most common material. However, there are some ex exceptions. As you guys see here, we this is the obstacles of the uh, 2020 game. This is small, so we just call it the boundaries. Though they are different, but they have the same characteristic. They all affect directly to your movement mechanism. Sometimes you're gonna have some problems with uh, movement as a robot may stuck on these boundaries or with the high platform, the robot may not go over those things. So what should we do here? I suggest you guys have different types of wheels for changing and to finding out the most suitable one to the game feel. My team's robots had struggles with uh, these boundaries uh, we just have to ma make a new wheels and the rest are straight wheels. So uh, the fourth uh, component of the, of the game feel is the, about the extra task. So this task is really special as every year we have different tasks to complete. As you can see, this is the, pro the prototype of the plate, which is made from wood. And what we do here is to rotate the wheels for the required colors or the required numbers of oscillations to get to the next round. So this tax is optional, but you guys should notice uh, them as this should uh, provide you guys with extra points and improve your ranking points. And our last part here is the end game task. And is they usually the climbing tax. So we have two common types for this task. The first one is the hanging bar. And second one are the platforms with uh, different levels. So as you can see, this is the prototype of the LC game field to the N20 game. So 
you notice it is made from metal and is really strong. Not only allow three robots to climb on it balancedly, but also it needs to swing at the exact state. Secondly, about the platform, this kind of tax appears in LRC 2019 and 2018 game, which are called the half zones. And those platforms are at the end game and it has diff uh, from two or three levels for you guys to climb on it. And I remember that for each robot climb on the platform or the hanging bar, you guys should receive about 20, po 20 points for each robot. And some of you got to ask me, how can we test out our mechanism? So for the hanging bar, I suggest you guys uh, have temporary or remote frame to hang this on or finding a place that is strong enough for the bar so that when you guys testing out the, the mechanism, it will not fall down. So you guys can let the robots uh, climb at the middle of the hanging bar or let them climb on one side and you guys can even climb on the other side to balance the hanging bar and test out the mechanism. Next up, for the platform, you guys can gather some boxes of wood or metal, gather them and stabilize them at one place, and then let the robot climb on it. So you guys can improve the uh, mechanism by increase the weight of the robot by using rocks, or even you guys can sit on it too. Regulars, right? <laughs> for the recap, we have gone through two parts of this episode. The first part is about pro prototyping, which we have shown you the two-wheel shooter and the prototype of it. And the second part, I have shown you the game fill, which include five most common components. They are the go tower, the supply station, the obstacles, the extra task and the end game task. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next episode.